afternoon, everybody. This is the last section, I think. And hopefully, you are not falling asleep yet. And <laughs> today, um, my name is Jeffrey Ho. I'm representing my well in marketing and with my partner, mine, who is the software PLM for the major focus on the SOC enablement side. So we both will we'll present to you is the OCP, Universal CP ecosystem using the Mawel Switch 5 and SOC. So um, I think I should get started. And the first thing is uh, in Mawel, just get a little background of Mawel SOC. So we do have CPU core on ARMv8. We don't talk about ARMv7. We have a long history of ARMv7. So um, we go from the a lot of different cores, but on ARMv8, we start with a low end on dual core and up to a high end on the eight core at 2.5 gig. So with this uh, broad portfolio, with the same software, we will be enable us to address the universal CP market with the SOC we have, plus our switch and our file. So um, some of these uh, positioning is we're actually doing for a lot of different market, but universal CP or virtual CP side is one, of, uh, one or two of the things that we, we believe is growing very fast. Thanks for the AT&T folks to, to, to start that. Okay, and Mawel, uh, in Mawel we do have um, a broad portfolio of products. So one of them is a CPU I mentioned. We have a A53 and A72 from uh, one gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz, two core to eight core. And we do have the Prestera switching that, that go from like maybe 50, uh, 50 gigabit bandwidth up to a 1.8T. So we have a wide range of switch products that can address portion of the universal CPU market with Pastera, and the rest we will address it with our Soho switch, which, which will go from like a four port to 11 port, gigabit ethernet port with 10 gig uplink. And we also have a whole portfolio of Alaska file that can, that can work in between. So currently um, to report our progress in the universal CPE, we do partner with this partner to come up with different boxes that some of them is like a dual core and a quad core and an eight core and a, and a quad core with, uh, with Pastera switch. So let's have a recap of the last year OCP, universal CP spec. And I changed it to small coin, big core because um, we don't have Intel coin with us. So, so from, from those spec, we actually see there's a micro, extra small, small, medium, and large. And they go from a different range of uh, performance, address different spot or different um, scale of the performance. And they have different SSD requirement, IO requirement, and potentially like whether it's a rack mount, whether it's a standalone or, or with different configuration on the hardware side. And on the software side, um, one of the thing is, the key thing is about using an open BMC. And when you, whenever you interact with a switch, you need a side to connect to them. And also they need to run like, a, example is an open network Linux as an example. So that, that is pretty much the base minimum to be able to, set, to be used as a universal CP. And from Mawel, we are going into, into them one by one. The first one I'm going to talk about is the micro, uh, the micro universal CPE. And in the base spec, it's a two core atom with four gigabyte of DRAM, 32 gig of SSD, and with around four interface, where two of them is a combo port, so you can do SFP and copper um, auto detect kind of things. So in Mawel, what we are trying to address it, we are going to use um, Amada 7040, which is a quad core A72. Uh, per core performance wise, it's actually around, um, around, so Atom core with the same frequency, we'll be doing about um, 1.8x in terms of compute performance. So we are well beyond the two core Atom limit, but we are getting a lot more in case that you need a lot more uh, universal um, VNF performance. So we're using a quad core to address this market and we're putting a Soho switch so you can, you can do your VLAN, you can do your DSA tag to, to split it into different Mac or you can be in the same switch domain and to get you a management port and the LAN. And on the wing side, because of the um, auto meter detect or combo port requirement, so we are putting in a 1512P part five to do the auto detect. So in this way, we are fully compliant to the micro CP spec in a controllable fashion with all my well solutions. So the next one we're going to talk about is about the extra small universal CPE. On this one, 
we actually put in a quad core with two gigahertz, up to two gigahertz with a 64-bit DDR, and you can go eight or 16 gigabyte of DRAM. And, and since the original spec, they are looking for like a six LAN and two WAN, and the WAN can be SFP or, or copper. So we put in a different switch this time, another sole switch we call a Parado, it's a 6390X, which got eight port of copper, four thirties port that can be auto config auto-detect on those. So we are trying to demonstrate how to use a single chip to, to solve both the switching uh, requirement and also combo port requirement on this. So other than that, um, because of the requirement, also have a BMC on it. So we are actually adding a BMC subsystem. Even the BMC subsystem, we are trying to address it using our Marvell uh, chips. So this is uh, our low-end A53. Can be a dual core, can be a single core. And we, we connect with the, with the UR, SGMI, I2C, and potentially PCIe to get you the management port capability at the same time as a BMC. So with all this, we believe we can well address the, um, the ultra small market. Um, one last thing is um, the implementation of the, of the LTE is usually a modem with a US, USB connection. And for Wi-Fi, Marwell do have 2x2, 4x4, 11N, AC, and potentially coming with the AX. So we can well align to provide a total Marwell solution for the extra small universe of CPE. Um, the next one is actually the small CPE. The original requirement is for big core. It's like a 4 Xeon core. So for the um, Cortex-A72, it's about 50 to 60 or 65% of a Xeon core. So we are going to use an 8 core Cortex-A72, the partner with 8082 to address this, to get you enough performance. It can scale from like 2 gigahertz to 2.5, and hopefully that, that should be enough performance on the CPU core to address the market. And in the, in the Swiss side, they actually, uh, the or original requirement is 10 gigabit Ethernet port with 4 SFP. So we do have uh, a two option. This is one of the options that we use two Soho switch to address the market. So with two Soho switch, I can get up to 16 gigabit Ethernet port with four SFP. And depends on how you want the SFP to be, to be configured, it can be an auto, auto detect port or it can be a, can be a standalone port because uh, each switch is an 11 port. And at the same time, if you think that you don't really need 10 port, for example, you say, hey, I only need eight port or, or six port then we can remove one of the switch to save the bond cost. And the same BMC is available on the side. And the same um, um, Wi-Fi option, LTE option is all available. And, we, and natively, all our device, we have two or four SATA, so we can do two M.2. And the last one is um, the dying gas. The dying gas is actually, we are implementing in our SOC, we have a little Cortex-M3 that can do the dying gas without the main CPU. So that's how we believe this is a good fit for the uh, universal CPU. So I mentioned about we have two implementation. So the other implementation is whenever you believe VXLAN or, or MVGRE is going to be useful in a universal CPU, like for example, it may help offload the VM to VM switching. So we'll introduce another switch, which is the Pastera switching that can support the VXLAN and MVGRE that can help offload some of these things. And this one is a larger scale switch, so it actually can go up to like 48 gig port or 24 2.5 gig port. And if you think that in the, mid, in the middle, your universal CPU is going to, to connect to a lot of access point, then all this file can be upgraded to a 2.5 gig file and get you like 24 or 12 2.5 gig. And other than that, the core is the eight core and we use the high performance skill, which will get you to 2.5 gig with eight core. And also um, the rest will be very similar to what I have before. Um, okay, and the BMC will be the same BMC subsystem that, that we can leverage across the board. So, I finished my hardware section and I will introduce mine to the, to the, to the crowd and continue on software. Yeah, so we all know without software, nothing will work. <laughs> so. Okay, so. Um, to answer the OCP UCP yeah. spec that was introduced by at and uh, Actually, we identified a few uh, uh, important uh, ecosystems that we are now supporting. We are talking about ONI, SAI, and SONIC, which is an uh, open networking operating system. Uh, 
We have ported uh, Oni with U-Boot, and it's working in our CPUs. Uh, if I also mentioned by Jeffrey before that the software is uh, compatible along our uh, CPUs, so um, this is uh, something that we will benefit from all, all of our CPUs that were uh, used so that before and all the UCPE um, uh, classes introduced by Jeffrey. The second thing is the SI, which is the standard API needed for open networking uh, operating system for uh, switches like ONL, Sonic, OpenSwitch. Um, we integrated that also with our SDK. It supports uh, our Prestera switches, so it can integrate with a standard OS. The other thing that we did, we supported Sonic for the first time. Uh, Sonic is running in ARM 64-bit. Uh, we are showing that also in our booth. So we have ported Sonic into ARM 64-bit uh, and integrated that together with the SI, with the switches. And using those three main elements, ONI, SI, and Sonic, you can have um, a answer the main uh, requirement that is mentioned in the spec, although the, for the UCPE you need much more than um, those three. In addition to the, those three, our Armada CPUs, all of them, include uh, important secure, security features, a secure boot, and a trusted execution environment, uh, utilizing the ARM Trust Zone, supported in the CPU and the uh, SOC itself. So using the, this technology, the ARM uh, Trust Zone and the Secure Boot, actually you can achieve a chain of trust, ability to have a secure storage, and ability to run secure services in the UCP. And using that, actually you can eliminate uh, the need for a TPM device, and you can optimize the POM for the UCP. For the trust zone, uh, what we did, we support an uh, open operating system called uh, Opti and an open portable uh, trusted, trusted execution environment. And we have upstreamed the support as well. So the support of the, um, the CPUs mentioned by Jeffrey before, our two cores up to eight cores, also upstream to the main Opti uh, source code. So also it can be available, and you can get those features. So looking into the bigger picture of uh, universal CPE, it's actually, a, you can look um, as a server ecosystem, but running at the edge. Today, to, run, to be able to run the services, you need to have a very similar ecosystem as what is running in the servers. And what you see here is um, the ecosystem that is very similar to what is running in the servers. Uh, we support at the uh, bootloader, we support uh, only your boot. UFI um, is important since we are also SPC compliant. It means that you can actually boot as a stock operating system like CentOS or Debian in our CPU. And this is also possible since we are upstreaming, actually upstreamed all of the support as well to the mainline kernel. So today you can have the latest CentOS that was uh, announced to support ARM 64-bit and, and, uh, and run it on our device since we have the UFI implemented and we are SPCA compliant. Also, uh, another uh, exercise that we did, we also ran the latest Debian as well with the GPU, and it's also st stock Debian and running in this ARM 64-bit device. In addition, I mentioned the Opti, and above of that, you see familiar uh, uh, ecosystems like uh, Debian, uh, OVS, Open, uh, uh, OpenStack, VPP, all are supported in uh, uh, our CPU. 
all what you can expect to see in a virtualized server environment. In addition, we also um, an edge platform. We have enabled a, an ability to connect to the cloud. We are working also with uh, Google and Amazon. We have verified both the open cloud IoT and Amazon Greengrass work, working this ecosystem working on our device. And you you also can connect to the cloud. Uh, for a virtualized ecosystem, um, I should have mentioned before, this slide is more for the virtualized ecosystem. Uh, we also partnered with a company called Telco System that has integrated their code over uh, OpenStack and all of our uh, Linux and so on. And and they can provide a zero touch um, provisioning uh, an NVI operating system that can enable running a, a standard of the shelf uh, VNFs. Uh, what we are showing in our booth there, we are running uh, of the two of the shelf VNFs from Trend Micro and Sixwind. We also can run Snort. We are talking with uh, also the open source uh, uh, firewall and security uh, software from BFSense. Also, Sentinel, uh, Sentinel is a, it's a company from Germany. They have a security software. They have also ported their VNF, their software to be a VNF running with OpenStack and our hardware. So this is also an extra VNF. We also working with other partners, also with ARM, to make to enable more VNFs running like SDN and others on ARM. The other ecosystem, and we, what we see is the, the trend to move also to microservices or run it in a containers. Um, so we also uh, enabled, uh, actually it's running, dockers and uh, containers and dockers. So um, we also partners with another uh, company called Pixium and they used the, our software as well to run their own a edge software platform. And in our booth as well, we, you see that we are demonstrating their uh, video analytics and also an SD1 and VPN as well over Docker's in a microservices model, uh, the container, uh, containers model. So as you see, can usually uh, run in a server ecosystem. It can run also at the edge with the ARM 64-bit ar architecture as well. Uh, so what we have today and what we did, like I will go back uh, very fast. Uh, this is an example for a bomb optimized uh, platform that we partner with Cybertan, uh, answer the extra small UCP solution. Uh, the component here very similar to what Jeffrey before mentioned. Uh, this is a first uh, platform using the, our four core. Uh, second one, that is using our new eight core device. Uh, it should come in the next few months. It should be an open platform and should include also the PMC, the, uh, what also now uh, Jeffrey will uh, go into details. And this platform will be open and uh, we are uh, intending also to, uh, to contribute the design files and, the, and, and to the uh, OCP as well. And the last slide, I will give it to Jeffrey, talk about the BMC as well. Hey, thanks, Brian. So um, yeah, the last thing I want to mention is about the BMC. So in, in general, um, what's in the market, for example, today you have the BMC with single core or maybe with dual core. And, and from us, because we inherit all those um, SOC integration for, for this aspect, so we are introducing, we're, we're leveraging our AD, uh, ADA F3720 for BMC. There's a few things that's important, which is like a security support. So the device have secure boot, and they have the trust zone, they have the OPTEE, so they can do the root of trust. They can do all the secure storage for the key, and also the secure uh, ex uh, service. So with that, we believe, um, because I think um, even if the server is not vulnerable, if you have a vulnerable BMC system, your whole system will be, will be, will be dead. So the BMC also need to have a secure boot, root of trust and everything. 
Um, so in this platform, we have a UART and SGMI to connect to the, to the host. Um, we don't do um, NCSI, so we have to use a second UART, I mean, second SGMI to connect back to the host and the I2C bus to connect to, the, to all the peripheral on the board. And Actually, we don't need that. Like, in, we right. don't need that in CSI. Yeah. So, so the I2C, we probably would use it to connect to um, a lot of the peripheral yeah. on the board for temperature, fan monitor, etc. So we have a RGMI connect to a one gig file to connect to a management port. So basically, um, so what, what's up to now is the chip, we have all the software, kernel, U boot, uh, trusted boot, everything upstreamed it. And we have, we have fully support the Yapto environment so that can be readily available for the open, C, open BMC development. So um, that's about the final slide about the BMC. Okay. So I think um, we are done. We are up for questions. When? I think we have time for questions. Yes, we do. <laughs> and it's the last one, so no one is uh, rushing us yeah. out, I think. <laughs> okay. So any, any question from the, from the audience? Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. You're doing like the small and the extra small. Do you have any uh, any solutions for like larger? So any of the um, bigger ones? at the moment we are we are doing the um, extra small, small and medium, and we haven't going to looking into the way to address the like the 16 core version yet. But in in a couple of months we do have a solution, but not not at the moment. Right now. Uh, the scaling we have is the ultra small with two core, the four core, and the eight core at 2.5 gig. And because um, one thing we haven't mentioned that is uh, we, do, we do have a lot of optimization on the DBDK. And so um, in this virtualized, virtualized platform, the OVS DBDK is uh, one of the important aspects to determine the performance of your box. And we do a lot of optimization. And hopefully at the end of the op optimization, we are going to see very low overhead that we can come up with a lot more performance, even on the eight core at 2.5 gig. Yes. And having mentioned that is like, uh, for example, just now the six win, uh, the VNF, they also have a six win IPsec stack that is really optimized with, and accelerator friendly. So with those, a lot of those performance, potentially um, even you're running virtualized, you will have a better performance with um, hardware friendly that we have a look aside accelerator on security engine that can help in, in overall performance, with boosting on this. Okay, any other question? Or oh, mind you have a comment? Yes, sir. Yeah. Huh? Can you talk a little bit about your ARM trust zone? Uh, is that a, a hardware implementation you have or is it uh, uh, yeah. some firmware in there? What is it that you're doing? So the ARM trust zone is a feature from ARM CPUs that can provide you with an execution environment. So you can think there's a, as a, there's a supervisor exception and user space. And there's an, an, another mode uh, called trust zone that in that mode you only enable a trusted accesses to special address spaces. So it's supported by the architecture of ARM. And our SSC support that as well. Yes. Yes. How the fusion yes, arm, and we are supporting that also in our SOC. Yes. So if, if, if your question is about is the user space application can run can read that piece of memory, the answer is no. It's a hardware protected. Yeah. But of course, this is not a specific malware feature. It's it's a feature architected by arm overall on everyone. And everywhere. and Marvel has did the integration with that. Yes. With our like storage, memory, and so on, so you can have secured access. Another question from our team. <laughs> if not, then thank you very much, and uh, thank you. thanks for your time. All right, thanks everybody. That is the end. That's the end of the telco oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> workshop. Thanks for coming, and we'll look forward to you at next summit, if not one of the workshops for telco in between. Thanks. Bye-bye.